of France have been deposed by militaries exploiting a crisis of trust in government institutions. Like many of the countries in the region, Gabon has maintained close relations with France, yet in recent years, dissatisfaction with French political and economic influence in former colonies that has grown. And if successful, Wednesday's coup in Gabon would be the eighth in Western Central Africa in three years. The other seven have one thing in common, none have succumbed to international efforts to overturn them. As per analysts, Africa's coup wave shows little signs of stopping now. The military takeover in Gabon is the eighth in West and Central Africa since 2020. And the latest, the mutinous soldiers in Gabon proclaimed their guard chief as the country's leader. This after placing the just re-elected president, Ali Bongo, under a house arrest. Well, General Bryce Olegunigema has been appointed as the transition leader. The question is, what exactly is happening in Gabon? And are there any possibility of the Gabon coup following the same pattern as other West African countries? To talk more on this, we have with us Professor Frida Monuha. He's joining us live from Nigeria and he's a professor at the University of Nigeria, Nusoka. Thank you so much for joining us on Beyond, Professor. Thank you for having me. Right, and Professor, for starters, help us understand why was there a coup? This is the eighth in West and Central Africa since 2020. Yes, thank you. Uh, as you have rightly pointed out now, the, 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 the coup in Gabon uh, is the latest in a series of coups that has raised serious concern about uh, the surgeon or the resurgence of coup in West and Central Africa. Again, okay. issues of coup d'etat and junta is something that was much more prevalent in the 1980s and late 1990s. But uh, since the 2020, we have seen series of coup taking place in, in Burkina Faso, in Guinea, in Mali, to some extent in Sudan. And so what has now happened was that, is that people are beginning to query whether the kind of democratic institutions Africans have inherited in terms of uh, the return to democracy in, in, in 2000, and whether they were strong enough to serve as, as a beacon of hope for, for, for people in Africa. And I think with what has happened in Gabon, a lot of questions have been raised. First is that do we have the kind of elections that support democracy? Second is also the character of the elective, elected regimes, particularly civilian regimes. And third, more importantly also, is the way a manner in which the military has been configured. In the case of Gabon, I think a lot of concerns. People are really asking, is, is this really a coup uh, to end almost, more, half a, almost uh, 55 years of the rule of the, of the Obangos, or is it actually a protest against a democratic um, deficit? For me, I think it's actually in between. What has happened is that you may know that the Bongos, that is, um, Omar Bongo has been there uh, since, 1937, since 1937, and then uh, in 2009, when he died, uh, his son, Ali Bongo, took over and has been uh, the, the president for going for the third time. So the last election uh, was characterized with a lot of flaws. Uh, there were issues of uh, belated arrival of materials. There were issues of not removing the names of those who were supposed to participate right, in the election. Uh, right. I was just coming to that, that we've also seen people rejoicing on the streets after the coup, which ended 56-year-old Bongo's dynasty rule. Yes, I, I, I think, again, it is actually a, a, a manifestation of an outburst of happiness. But again, we need to send a note of caution. Okay. Note of caution. Most of the people who are actually celebrating are very young persons. And again, these are people who did not live under military rule. These are people who are less than 25, 30 years, who did not actually see the dangerous uh, side effects of military rule in Africa. But then it's also a sense of optimism because it's, it's like a break uh, to the rule of the bongos. In fact, there is already concern uh, what people have corrupted the, 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 the situation as what they call. Gabongos, which is actually a conjoined word that comes from Gabon and the Obongos family. So you have to talk about, you know, try to break the dynasty of Gabongos because it appears as though uh, that the state of Gabon is part and parcel of the property of the family of the, Ob of the uh, Obongos family. So having seen this kind of break, it definitely would trigger uh, that sense of happiness, that sense of joy. But I think it's very important we really need to deep uh, probe deeper into the dynamics because even Bryce uh, Nguama, who is now uh, the head of the junta, is a cousin to Omar Bongo and right. so uh, to, to Ali Bongo. And so the question is he has been there for a very long time. 
Remember also he was the AD camp, that is the ADC of Omar Bongo, and then later was made the head of the presidential guard of Ali Bongo, which means therefore right, that this Professor. guy has been within the cycle of leadership for a very long time. Absolutely. So it is not a complete break uh, from the, the, the dynasty or the family rule. I think it's just more or less a change of personality and a change of uniform. Absolutely, Professor. Now, there was also a recent video that surfaced in which the detained President Bongo can be seen seeking help from foreign allies. What is expected on that front? Well, I think that that desperate call was a clear reflection of his powerlessness in the context of the fact that he has lost control of power and there's very little or nothing that he can do. Again, he's part of the persons that fed the tiger that is about to eat him because he was part of the people who supported the emergence of Bryce as the leader of the, of the presidential guard. And Bryce also carried out a far-reaching reform that made the presidential guard much more powerful than it was uh, before Ali Bongo regime. Therefore, in the face of that seeming powerlessness, he's the only left to add call for, 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 for support. And I, do, I really do not think the support is going to come for several reasons. Granted right. that the African Union, granted that the United Nations, and even granted that France and other West African countries have actually condemned the coup. But I think there's very little that will come his way. Because again, they are going to confront this dilemma we're already talking about. Because the Obongo's family has been in the helm of affairs for 55 years. So people are desperate to see a break. Even though to a very large extent that Bryce is part and parcel of that family. The, the, the point is that he gives them that momentary solace that a new face has come, at least not bearing the name of Bongo, bearing a different name. And these are young persons, like I mentioned earlier, who actually have not really had an experience of the, of the deficit of military junta in Africa. These are very young persons who are actually looking uh, for a change right, and also professor. looking for opportunities for them to realize their, 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 their full potentials. So a change in that direction can easily uh, garner their interest. But I think we need to sound, sound a note of caution on that. Absolutely, Professor. We'll have to wait and see how things pan out in Gabon. But thank you so much for joining us on Vion and sharing insights with us on this. Thanks very much. Now the global news. Military officers in Gabon said that they had seized power on Wednesday, placing the president under a house arrest and naming a new leader. That is after the poll body announced Ali Bongon had won a third term, saying that they represented the armed forces. The officers declared on TV that the election results were cancelled, borders closed and state institutions dissolved. Within hours, the generals met to discuss who would lead the transition and agreed by unanimous vote to appoint General Bryce Olugu Nugema, former head of the Presidential Guard. According to another televised address, meanwhile, from, from detention in his residence, Bongo appealed in a video statement to the foreign allies, imploring them to speak out on his and his family's behalf. He said he did not know what was happening. I'm Ali Bongo. Ondimba, President of Gabon, and I'm to send a message to all the friends that we have all over the world to tell them to make noise, to make noise for the people here have arrested me and my family. My son is somewhere, my wife is is another place, and I'm at the residence. Right now, I'm at the residence and nothing happening nothing is happening i don't know what what's going on so i'm calling you to make noise to make noise to make noise really i'm i'm thanking you thank you bongo's plight was a dramatic reversal from the early hours of wednesday when the electoral commission declared him the winner of saturday's disputed vote Hundreds of people celebrated the military's intervention in the streets of the Gabonese capital. The United Nations, African Union and France, Gabon's former colonial ruler, which has troops stationed there, condemned the coup. La France condamne le coup d'état militaire qui est en cours au Gabon. Et la France surveille avec beaucoup d'attention l'évolution de la situation sur place et réaffirme son souhait que 
le résultat de l'élection, lorsqu'il sera connu, puisse être respecté. Donc, nous surveillons cela avec attention. Le secrétaire général est suivant très attentivement la situation situation en Gabon. Il note avec grande préoccupation l'annonce des résultats de l'élection parmi les rapports de sérieux infringements des libertés fondamentales. Il affirme fermement le coup d'attente de l'élection comme un moyen de résoudre la crise électorale post-élection. Le secrétaire général réaffirme sa forte opposition aux militaires coups. The Secretary General calls on all actors involved to exercise restraint, engage in an inclusive and meaningful dialogue, and ensure that the rule of law and human rights are fully respected. He also calls on the National Army and Security Forces to guarantee the physical integrity of the President of the Republic and his family. The United Nations stands by the people of Gabon. The White House National Security Spokesperson said that the U.S. is watching the situation closely and dubbed it deeply concerning. Meanwhile, Britain termed the military coup unconstitutional but acknowledged that concerns of the recent election. The German Foreign Minister has said that the people in Gabon must be able to autonomously and freely decide their future. Bongo took over in 2009 on the death of his father Omar who had ruled since 1967. The opponents say that the family has done very little to share the state's oil and mining wealth with its 2.3 million people. The violent unrest broke out after Bongo's contested 2016 election victory. And there was a foiled coup attempt in 2019 as well. The Gabon officers also said that they had arrested the president's son and also others on charges of corruption and treason. Hours after the senior military officers in Gabon announced seizing power, hundreds of citizens thronged the streets to support the coup. President Ali Bongo Ondimba has been put under house arrest while one of his sons has been arrested for treason. Residents of Port Gentil, Gabon's second largest city, took to the streets in celebration after military officers in the oil-producing nation said they had seized power. <laughs> Senior military officers who said they represented the armed forces declared on the television channel Gabon 24 that the election results were cancelled, borders were closed and state institutions were dissolved. This is after a tense voting for presidential elections without international observers that was set to extend the Bongo families more than half a century in power. Amid concerns over President Ali Bongo Ondimba's state by the international community, the coup leaders claimed he was being put under house arrest. Il est porté à la connaissance de la communauté nationale et internationale que M. Ali Bongo Ondimba est gardé en résidence surveillée. Il est entouré de sa famille et de ses médecins. Incidentally, the military coup came just hours after the presidential election results were announced by the State Election Committee that declared President Ali Bongo Ondimba had won the election with 64% of the vote early on Wednesday morning. In a video appeal, deposed President Ali Bongo, who has been placed under house arrest, urged his supporters to rise up against the military coup in Gabon. And to send a message to all the friends that we have all over the world, to tell them to make noise, to make noise, for the people here have arrested me and my family, my son is somewhere, my wife is in another place, and I'm at the residence. After the announcement of the coup, General Bryce Oligui Ngema, head of the presidential guard of ousted President Ali Bongo Ondimba, was carried in triumph by hundreds of soldiers to the cries of Oligui president. Unlike Niger, which mi witnessed a military coup and Africa's echo as threatening military intervention to restore democracy, Gabo is not part of the economic bloc ECOWAS. It is a member of the Organization of the Petroleum Exporting Countries and is the eighth largest producer of oil in sub-Saharan Africa. Ali Bongo Ondimba was first elected as president of Gabon in 2009 following the death of his father Omar Bongo Ondimba 
who had ruled the country for over four decades. With one family in power for such a long time, some would have argued that unrest was imminent. Following the 2023 presidential elections, which gave the family an extension of power, Gabor, which has good ties with former colonial power France, has drawn the ire of its leaders, which has condemned the coup. China has also called for the personal safety of deposed President Ali Bongo. Uh, Russia has stated it was concerned by the situation in Gabon. Wednesday was supposed to be a day of celebration for Ali Bongo. Gabon's election authority declared him the emphatic victor of Saturday's presidential election. Now, saying they represented the armed forces, military officers, they declared on TV that the poll results were cancelled, borders closed and state institutions were dissolved. Here's a look at what's happening in Gabon and Africa's coup wave. Gabon military officers named General Bryce Ligui Nguema as the country's new leader. From detention in his residence, Ali Bongo appealed in a video statement to foreign allies imploring them to seek out on his and his family's behalf. He said that he did not know what was happening. Hundreds of people celebrated the military's intervention, on the other hand, in the streets of the Gabonese capital. The Gabon officers also said that they had arrested the president's son, Bongo Valentin, and others for corruption and treason. Bongo took over in 2009 on the death of his father, Omar Bongo, who had ruled since 1967. The opponents say the family had done little to share the state's oil and mining wealth with its 2.3 million people. Violent unrest broke out after Bongo's contested 2016 election victory. The Central African state witnessed a foiled coup attempt in 2019. Who is General Bryce Oligwe Nguema now? Here's all you need to know about that. General Nguema loyally served the Central African country's longtime strongman before turning on his son in Wednesday's military takeover. Nguema won his purse as an aide de camp to ousted leader's father Omar Bongo. Remember, Omar Bongo ruled Gabon with an iron fist for almost 42 years until his death in 2009. Nguema was moved aside in 2009 after Ali Bongo was elected to succeed his father, beginning a 10-year stint as the military attaché at Gabon's embassies in Morocco and Senegal. He returned to prominence in 2018 as the Republican Guard's intelligence chief, replacing Ali Bongo's half-brother, Frederic Bongo. He was promoted to a general six months after becoming Republican Guard's intelligence chief. And Guayma pushed Bongo Jr. to improve his men's working and living conditions by upgrading their facilities, funding schools for soldiers' children, and also refurbishing some accommodations. Nguema said Bongo has now been placed in retirement but did not set a timeline for a transition back to civilian rule, shrouding his intentions in doubt. Gabon is now the sixth former French colony to be taken over by military leaders since 2020. Gabon's former colonial ruler has troops stationed there. Across West and Central Africa, democratically elected presidents and allies of France have been deposed by militaries exploiting a crisis of trust in government institutions. Like many of the countries in the region, Gabon has maintained close relations with France, yet in recent years, dissatisfaction with French political and economic influence in former colonies that has grown. And if successful, Wednesday's coup in Gabon would be the eighth in Western Central Africa in three years. The other seven have one thing in common, none have succumbed to international efforts to overturn them. As per analysts, Africa's coup wave shows little signs of stopping now. The military takeover in Gabon is the eighth in West and Central Africa since 2020. And the latest, the mutinous soldiers in Gabon proclaimed their guard chief as the country's leader. This after placing the just re-elected president, Ali Bongo, under a house arrest. Well, General Bryce Olegu Nguema has been appointed as the transition leader. The question is, what exactly is happening in Gabon? And are there any possibility of the Gabon coup following the same pattern as other West African countries? To talk more on this, we have with us Professor Freedom Onuha. He's joining us live from Nigeria and he's a professor at the University of Nigeria, Nusoka. Thank you so much for joining us on Beyond, Professor. Thank you for having me. Right, and Professor, for starters, help us understand why was there a coup? This is the eighth in West and Central Africa since 2020. Yes, thank you. Uh, as you have rightly pointed out now, the, 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 the coup in Gabon 
uh, is the latest in a series of coup that has raised serious concern about uh, the surging or the resurgence of coup in West and Central Africa. Again, okay. issues of coup d'etat and junta is something that was much more prevalent in the 1980s and late 1990s. But uh, since the 2020, we have seen series of coup taking place in, in Burkina Faso, in Guinea, in Mali, to some extent in Sudan. And so what has now happened was that, is that people are beginning to query whether the kind of democratic institutions Africans have inherited in terms of uh, the return to democracy in, in, in two and whether they were strong enough to serve as, as a beacon of hope for, for, for people in Africa. And I think with what has happened in Gabon, a lot of questions have been raised. First is that do we have the kind of elections that support democracy? Second is also the character of the elective, elected regimes, particularly civilian regimes. And third, more importantly also, is the way a manner in which the military has been configured. In the case of Gabon, I think a lot of concerns. People are really asking, is, is this really a coup uh, to end almost, more, half a, almost uh, 55 years of the rule of the, of the Obangos, or is it actually a protest against a democratic um, deficit? For me, I think it's actually in between. What has happened is that you may know that the Bongos, that is, um, Omar Bongo has been there uh, since, 1937, uh, since 1937, and then uh, in 2009, when he died, uh, his son, Ali Bongo, took over and has been uh, the, the president for going for the third time. So the last election uh, was characterized with a lot of flaws. Uh, there were issues of uh, belated arrival of materials. There were issues of not removing the names of those who were supposed to participate right, in the election. Uh, right. I was just coming to that, that we've also seen people rejoicing on the streets after the coup, which ended 56-year-old Bongo's dynasty rule. Yes, I, I, I think, again, it is actually a, a, a manifestation of an outburst of happiness. But again, we need to sound a note of worship. No, right. a note of caution. Most of the people who are actually celebrating are very young persons. And again, these are people who did not li li uh, live under military rule. These are people who are less than 25, 30 years who did not actually see the de dangerous uh, side effects of military rule in Africa. But then it's also a, a sense of optimism because it's, it's like a break uh, to the rule of the bongos. In fact, there is already concern uh, what people have corrupted the, 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 the situation as what they call Gabongos, which is actually a conjoined word that comes from Gabon and the Obongos family. So you have to talk about, you know, try to break the dynasty of Gabongos because it appears as though uh, that the state of Gabon is part and parcel of the property of the family of the, Ob of the uh, Obongos family. So having seen this kind of break, it definitely would trigger uh, that sense of happiness, that sense of joy. But I think it's very important we really need to deep uh, probe deeper into the dynamics because even Bryce uh, Nguama, who is now uh, the head of the junta, is a cousin to Omar Bongo and right. so, uh, the, the, the Ali Bongo. And so, the question is, he has been there for a very long time. Remember, also, he was the AD camp, that is the ADC of Omar Bongo, and then later was made 